want to go straight to the phone lines and welcome in special guest Mike Eckler, the Tennessee's special teams coordinator and outside linebackers coach. Mike, we appreciate you taking the time for us. How are you? Hey, doing great. Appreciate you having me on. Hey, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, you look at this staff now, uh, Josh Heupel and the staff he's put together. I really like the mix. The guys have, A lot of guys on this staff have coached all over the country. And I think if I'm not mistaken, Mike, you have coached at every Power 5 conference. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. What do you think that does? When you look at it across your staff, you've got a lot of guys who've coached in the Big Ten, guys who've had a lot of SEC experience, guys who've coached in the Big 12. Uh, you, you take uh, Josh, for instance, played in the Big 12, has coached at UCF. When you bring a new staff together like this and you have so many guys with so much uh, diversity as far as coaching experience, what kind of advantage is that? I think it's a, it's a big advantage, but ultimately – what it boils down to is, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're coaching in the Pac-12, it doesn't matter if you're in the Big 12 or the SEC. I mean, coaching's teaching. And I think what Josh did is he hired a bunch of great teachers and really a bunch of really quality, quality people. So you walk in that building every single day and, and I mean, really, truly, you enjoy the people you're working with. There, we, we got a really, really bunch of smart people in there and, and people without egos, just people that ultimately – want to do what's best for the University of Tennessee, and, and we want to win. Mike, uh, it's Austin. So when you met Josh Heupel some, you know, 17, 18 years ago at, uh, at Oklahoma, take me through those, those first time you met him and, and, and what you thought and then how he's evolved and changed. Is he, this, is he pretty similar to what he was back then? And, and I know you guys had been kind of trying to figure out a way to hook up for a few years now, and some timing didn't always work out, but it worked out this past year. Well, it's kind of funny. I mean, go, starting back, that's, I started off the exact same time he started off, and I was the defensive GA at Oklahoma, and he was the offensive GA. And, you know, and he just got done playing and, and had a little stint in the NFL where he hurt his shoulder and couldn't play anymore. So he um, always knew he wanted to get into coaching. We got into coaching at the exact same time and had my office was right next to his, and and, and really it was – it was awesome getting to know him back then, and, and truly he's the exact same person as a person um, that he was or he is now that he was then. So I think that speaks volumes because a lot of times you can, you know, get intoxicated by your own success, so to speak. You walk in here, you're a uh, thrill a minute on Twitter with all the chili and all that stuff. Have you found good chili in Knoxville? I mean, like a serious question, have you, have you went to find some? Hey, my my stomach wouldn't do too good with chili now. Red Bull and chili don't mix. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, we gotta get you off those Red Bulls, man. Nah, uh, you know what? I really don't. I don't. I got. I gotta be honest with you. I don't drink very much. But I'm just kind of a gardener. I'm just digging life anyway. I don't need it. So Mike, I'll have maybe I'll maybe one or two a week. Let me ask you about with this team and what you've seen through spring. And I understand spring's a lot about player development and, and, and giving guys chances to see what they can do. Uh, but as you've watched this team and some of the younger kids evolve, and I know you guys as a new staff never want to come in with any preconceived notion. You wipe the slate clean. But what, what has jumped out to you about this group of players as you guys get ready to spring, play the spring game on Saturday? Well, I think really the core group of guys – they really love ball, and so they come out. They pack their lunch pail every single day, and and it's been a lot of fun you know, putting in a new system. And these guys have embraced it, and, and we got a long way to go. But it's been it, we got a we got a fun group of of young men to work with, and and they're they're busting their tail to get it right, and, and we're busting our tail to teach them, and and exactly what we want. And I'll tell you, coming in, I've been in so many different situations over the years over the years coming in. And quite honestly, it, it, you can be in, in a locker room at Southern Cal, you can be in a locker room at Oklahoma, or you can be in a locker room at Tennessee, and it's very similar. I mean, you're, you're dealing with young men who you are all um, similar in skill sets in, in a lot of ways, but ultimately it comes down to this. you got to earn their trust, and that takes time. And then you got to earn their respect, so to speak, and, and that you can develop them and teach them and, and – and, uh, you know, get them to maximize their ability, and then at the end of the day, once you have those two things, then when, once they figure out that you actually care about them, 
and you actually love them, then you got something. And so we're we're kind of in those stages where they're beginning to trust us right now and uh, respect the, the fact that we know what we're talking about. And, and so, again, it's just a process, and, and it's been fun. I've, I've really enjoyed it. You're working with the outside backers on defense. You got Tyler Barron, you got Bryson Eason, you got Byron Young. There's some there's some nice young pieces there for you to kind of help mold. What what do those guys bring? It seems like they kind of bring a little bit something different. Everybody's kind of got their little little niche. They they really do. I mean, you look at Bryson Eason, 280 pounds, so he's he's got a real power game, and um, you look at that Tyler Barron, and and he's about 260 pounds, and he's got a little more juice off the edge, and and um, a little more, um, you know, just a little bit different skill set. And then you look at BY, and BY is 235 pounds, and and he probably runs a 4-4. You know, the guy, the guy has got some serious speed. So, like you said, every one of those guys is a little bit unique and a little bit different skill set. And you kind of, um, you know, you're just you're just bringing out uh, the best in them and and. And utilizing it within our system um, the best we can. Hey, Mike, it's uh, Chris Lowe. We're visiting with Mike Eichler, Tennessee's special teams coordinator and outside linebackers mm-hmm. coach. We had Coach Banks on with us a few weeks ago talking about this defense, this team, and he talked about the mentality he wants to be a pressure defense, to come after people, to set the tone. How have you seen that mentality grow this spring? Well, I'll tell you, first of all, Coach Banks is what I call an RLD. That's a real live dude. And and our players would tell you that you probably you could toss on some dizzle that because that's a step above, an RL dizzle. And he, he's, a, he's a really, 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 really phenomenal football coach and he's done a great job. And and what's really been fun to watch is it, it takes a little bit of time, and I'm sure – I'm not trying to speak for Coach Banks, but to, to put in a new defense – and then to put it in against an offense that's going, you know, a mile a minute, it, it's you, you got to you got to do it a little bit different. And he's done a phenomenal job in, in really um, giving putting our guys in a good situation, and and at the same time putting in a lot of de- a lot of defense. Mike, that's that's a segues into what I wanted to ask you. So many offenses now are running the speed ball, the up tempo. You're going as fast as they possibly can, spreading people out. Obviously, what Tennessee did last year offensively was not that. What they're doing, what you guys are doing this year, is that. How much does that help you guys on defense to see that every day, knowing this coming season you're going to see it week in and week out, pretty much? I think from a defensive perspective, and again, this is just my opinion. Coach Banks may differ, but from my opinion, I think it, in in the long run it, it helps you if you can put in your defense, install your concepts and get your guys to understand it and make split-second decisions day in and day out, then when you're playing a team that goes slower, they'll be sitting there going, come on, man, let's go. You know, I mean, you got all kinds of time. And and so I, I think I'd much rather personally do it the way we're doing it than have to go into a game week and play against a tempo team. And now all of a sudden it's completely out of your comfort zone. Coach, I know you can't talk specifics about recruiting, but how much are you looking forward to the dead period ending? It's been in effect for over a year now to be able to get you know prospects back to campus and just kind of get a feel for them, let them get a feel for you, and just kind of be normal in the world of recruiting. I mean, I know Zoom has helped some, but it, you know it, it's not the same as you know your traditional face-to-face interaction. No, you hit the nail on the head. I can't wait. Absolutely can't wait and. Here's why. You talk to any NFL scout, you talk to anybody, any college coach who's been doing it for some time, you get an idea when you're watching it on film, when you're watching a player, it piques your interest. And, and, but you ultimately don't know a hundy until you go see them live. And, and when you see them live and see their movement skills, you know, live and in color, then it's a, that either, you're either like, yep, all right, that's exactly what I thought, or, a lot of times you're like, man, that's, geez, I didn't realize he was stiff in the hips, stiff in the ankles. He really labors out of his brakes. He, you know, whatever it is, you see their deficiencies. But you truly don't know 100% until you actually see them live. So, yeah, I can't wait. And then the opposite side of that is you don't, you know, some guys you may not 
be able to see how actually really good and fluid they are or what kind of competition they're playing against. And you get them in person, you get to see, you know, all the positive things about them, right? No question. Yeah, I mean, I didn't mean to be that. I didn't mean to be negative on that, but you're exactly right. I mean, it goes both ways. You, you'll see a guy, and I mean, through the years, I've seen guys, and and I had, I didn't even know what their doggone name was. And you walk out of there going, I want that guy. <laughs> so you're exactly right. Well, I don't want you to rehash the full story, but what what was it that caused you to have to get taken and dropped off 26 miles from from the stadium in, in Nebraska? And and you and then you ran it back was, in. What was that? It was it was extra hot chili. <laughs> so so it was, I, I, I it think was, if that ha- if I'll that happens you, here, I'll tell you the quick story. Uh, here's a quick story. Uh, number one, I love to run, and and I don't really enjoy sitting around. Like right now, I'm at Calhoun's um, um, out at Oak Ridge. I'm standing on the dock looking at glass right in front of me, and just just sitting here wondering why in the world I'm not out there on my slalom ski, just cutting this up. So, um, but, but now, but back to that story, it just, shoot, my wife was out of town with the kids. I didn't have anything to do right after our scrimmage. What was I going to do? Go home and sit down and watch TV. So I figured we had a great scrimmage and I had my man, Joe Mowgli had dropped me off on the interstate on I-80 and and I was going to run a marathon. If that happens here, since Neyland is one of the, one of only two stadiums you can get to by land and by water, that the other one being Washington, I think we drop you 26.2 miles away on the river and have you swim back. Your thoughts? Hey, hey uh, I'm up for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Mike, man, we uh, we really appreciate you joining us, and I know it's been a, a whirlwind for you. It must be pretty cool. I mean, you – Lawrence, Kansas, Bloomington, Indiana, Los Angeles, California, Baton Rouge, Athens, now Knoxville. You've pretty much seen every side of college football, and I'm sure you're very excited and eager to get settled in here on Rocky Top. Oh, no doubt. But we were taking a, a family vacation a couple of years ago, and one of my daughters asked me, she said, Dad, what do we tell people when they ask where we're from? So I hit that, I hit that country song, I've Been Everywhere, Man. And you Johnny know, Cash naming off all these places. Yeah, and Johnny Cash starts singing, naming off all these places. And they're like, yeah, we've been there, we've been there, we've been there. But that's what you tell people. <laughs> I've been everywhere, man. Well, <laughs> but for any, now, for any... I mean, we're we're fired up. And I'll tell you, uh, hitting one more thing about about Josh Heupel. I mean, he, I had never I had never seen him as a head football coach until I got here two and a half months ago. And he reminds me a lot of a guy that I played for in Bill Snyder. I mean, he is so doggone meticulous, and and I'll tell you, nothing gets by the guy. He comes off the practice field with a page of notes, and just from a special team standpoint, he'll be he'll come in and and come into my office and he'll say, "Hey, I, I didn't like this. I like this. Why do we do this? Why do we call it that?" You know, I mean, it's he is on top of everything, and I think he's. I'm just I'm just beyond fired up to uh, to work with him and work for him and and work here at Tennessee and, and, and with this entire staff, Willie Martinez, Coach Banks, BJ, Coach G on the defensive side, um, Coach Golish and LRB and um, Burns and, and uh, Mac and everybody on the, on the offensive side. I mean, it, we, got a, we got a great crew, man. Well, Mike, good, I, I just hope that Josh doesn't need it two or three in the morning the way Coach Snyder did. When I was out there a few years ago to visit with Coach Snyder, asking if those stories were true and, he sort of sheepishly looked at me and said, yeah, I, I was, of course, I was, he was in the office for about 18 hours, and he said, I got to eat about 1 yeah. or 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, hey, we're, hey, we're busting it right now about that, too. So, um, no, nah, but, but seriously, though, he, I'm telling you, he, you got yourself uh, an RLD as a head ball coach here now, and he, we're going we're gonna to do some great things, and we're, we're gonna, we'll get this thing turned around. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time. And for any of those listeners out in Oak Ridge and want to swing by the Melton Hill Calhouns, they actually had chili when we were there yesterday for lunch. So I'm sure Coach Eckler would be glad to partake in a bowl of chili with any of the listeners out in Oak Ridge right now. Coach, we appreciate you joining hey, us. Tell, tell, hey, yeah, but tell anybody who's got a dog on Mastercraft to pull up to the dock right now. I got a pair of shorts on. I'm ready to go. 
Oh, man. You're going to get deluge now, Coach. You, you've done it, man. There's going to be about ten of them here within two or three minutes. I don't think you realize. <laughs> <laughs> where, where the heck's this fall Navy I keep hearing about, man? Uh, <laughs> Listen, man, we appreciate it. You have a great night, okay? <laughs> hey, you have a great one, too. Thanks for having me on. Okay. Appreciate it, Coach. That's Tennessee Special Teams Coordinator you. and outside linebackers coach Mike Heckler breaking it down with us tonight on The Nation.